are exactly the zeros of are homeomorphic to the zeros of the first D Newton polynomials whose values are set to the point here. So the so the, this projection has fibers of the form which are homeomorphic to to Vandermond variety. Because I'm setting the first uh, d of the Newton parts to some values, and the whole fiber has to be in my set because my polynomial is a cylinder over the first d. So that means, from the theorem of Kostov and Given Tau, that Vandermond varieties intersected with the wild chamber are always contractible, even if they are singular. So that means that the fibers of this map are all contractible. And so CKV is, by the Beatrice Beagle argument, is homotopy equivalent to this projection onto the first D coordinates. So in other words, Quotient is somewhat of equivalent to uh, the image or variety only to the first D uh, first D parcels. And that gives us the vanishing result because now it's somewhat of a something that's dimensional, and for everything, all uh, many numbers of dimensions strictly smaller, but d or higher has to be zero. Is that clear? Uh, it looks like d over two something. No, the vanishing was d, but the bound was d over two. <laughs> so that gives vanishing. In the reference, uh, we got that equal to these. And now, the more important thing about the bound. So, the other thing is that, in fact, in the non singular Vandermont, so most of these fibers here would correspond to non singular Vandermont. Uh, varieties. And again, theorem of Arnold in the same paper is that the maximum of PD plus 1 on these random varieties define a continuous function, even all over the singular. So each, uh, uh, each random variety, even if singular, has a unique maximum and random variety intersected with the wall chamber has a unique maximum or minimum of this PD plus 1, as we saw in those pictures. And for the non-singular case, we know the phase on which this unique maximum, let's say, occurs. So that means if I follow, so we have a projection whose fibers are contractible. The fibers are random varieties intersected with the wall chamber. And if I follow the maximum of PD plus 1 on these fibers, then I get a continuous section of this projection uh, uh, over this set. And so, so, of course, this continuous section now is homotopy equivalent to the whole thing. And what is this continuous section? Well, this continuous section <laughs> is the intersection so here's a P lemma. So B 
quotiented by the xk, which is the one that's loose downstairs here, is homeomorphic. So not just homeomorphic, now it's homeomorphic because the continuous section is homeomorphic to this. Of the intersection of my original variety V with the union of certain faces of the wild chamber and so let's call these uh, comp KD and let's denote by uh, W K lambda to be the face correspond to a composition uh, lambda and which compositions do we take? Well, we take the ones prescribed by Arnold, namely where comp KD, and by the way, these are closed faces, and where comp KD are in this set of partitions of where the length is D. And of course, uh, R plus, uh, since the length is D, which is even, the, the R plus S plus all these things have to add up to D over 2. So, What's happening in the sphere example? Well, this was the loop. Now, if I map it to P1, P2, like where D is 2, so in P1, P2 space, the sphere is given by the equation P2 equals 1, and P1 between some interval, I don't know, minus uh, something to plus something. So, in the P1, P2 space, so this is the P1, P2 space, P2 equals 1, and P1, uh, so it's a segment, right, in the P1, P2 space. And I'm saying that if you now look upstairs, there is, and you follow, you look at the intersection of the sphere, with the union of faces of this type. Well, in this case, there is only one face of that type. So this one is level 2, 1, and that one is level 1, 2. So the quotient is homeomorphic to the union, Well, in this case, there's only one face. Of course, we could have chosen this to be the other one, but. Uh, and now, uh, so how many faces of that kind are there? Well, it's a partition of k minus d into d over two parts. So it's the same story. So the number, the cardinality of comp kd is also on the order of d over two minus one. But yeah, I'm cheating here, so, and each one of these intersection is, well, this is a d-dimensional phase, right? So the very numbers of a polynomial defined by a polynomial of degree d in d variables, I can bound by using polynomial Petrovsky, like 2 of d is to d. But these things are intersecting, right? So they are close faces. So you have to glue them together. So just bounding them separately is not enough. And you have to glue them together using some mind vietoris argument. But if you apply this mind vietoris argument a little naively, that you take all intersections of two times or three times, and but then this will spoil this bar, because if you take intersections pairwise, then already you'll get square. But you can do it, and this is where the thickening and the uh, shrinking arguments come in. So you can do it a little bit more cleverly. And this combinatorial explosion that happens because of my behaviors 
the number of intersections you have to consider is bounded by not all the intersections, but all the chains that appear in these uh, four sets of faces of the this uh, of this uh, this uh, wild chamber, which are above uh, faces of this type, and the number of such chains is still bounded by, uh, of course, multiplied by some function of d. So, the, so that's a combinatorial count. That, uh, not so difficult to put an upper bound on that. So this gets multiplied by something that just depends on d exponentially, but okay. Mm -hmm. And we still have a bound of this form, so the dependence on the exponent is not. Okay. Are you going to tell about it next time? Or? Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, so, uh, so the only thing that remains to explain properly is this uh, how, and that, well, I will take 15 minutes to explain, so I might try and do that. But I will also put this paper up on, on the archive by that time. So. Okay, so that's it.